Well, everyone, I'm Brandon Bonifer, and today we're gonna to talk about the Samsung Tab. Over the last few weeks, a lot of you guys have reached out to me and said, Brandon, what do you think of the Samsung Tab for note taking? And today I'm gonna to show you the Samsung Tab using Note Shelf, an app that I really do enjoy for note taking. So stay with me. So for those of you that know me, I'm huge in the digital planning and digital note taking. I have been doing it for a number of years and over the last year we've expanded our support for other devices and today guys I'm going to show you the Samsung Tab. Now when I first got this device, I have to be honest with you, I've been someone that's used a Surface Pro, I've used the iPad and this device felt different. It's more it, the form factor is just simply different. If I take the, the device and I hold it like I would a notepad, it seems to have more of a notepad feel to it. When I watch movies or when I browse the internet, it just didn't feel the same. But when I got into using the device and I started using side-by-side -side notation, I really started to love it this device and there will be more videos coming up where I'll show this device and show some of those different features as well as show different comparable apps where I'll show note shelf versus OneNote as well as a Samsung notes app. Those are going to be videos you're going to want to see. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button and get notified when those come out. But today we're going to talk about note shelf. A lot of you have said to me over the last few weeks, Brandon, I like OneNote. I've used OneNote across all my platforms but I don't like the fact that it's missing hyperlinks or it just doesn't have that ability to use it as I would a paper planner and swipe through the pages and I just miss some of those key features. And for iPad users, there's a lot of different apps that are available. GoodNotes is one, Nobility is one, Note Shelf is another one that's on the platform. Unfortunately, if you have an iPad and you have a Samsung Tab, which I really don't know why you would have both in the first place, but let's just say you did, Note Shelf doesn't sync across those platforms, but it does sync across Samsung or Android platforms. So if you have Note Shelf on your phone and then you also have it on your Samsung tab, it'll definitely sync across those platforms. I've been using the app for a few weeks now and I've really come to enjoy some of the experiences in it. And there's some things that really just kind of, I didn't recognize or just caught me off guard. So I wanna to talk to you guys today about those different things. We're gonna cover how to install the app, how to open the app, how to import a PDF such as a planner into the program. And then we're gonna dive into how to handwrite, type, highlight, use that Elasso tool import pictures and add and move pages. So let's get started. So the first thing about the Samsung tab is the pen itself. When they redesigned this latest version, it's down to nine milliseconds and I've been really impressed by the handwriting features of this. I also really like the fact that it has the ability to charge the pen on the device. I will personally say I don't like the location when I need to go grab it, however, it does allow a nice little tilted experience that I do enjoy if I was watching TV or swiping through different content on the device itself. Almost kind of wish I had two pens so that I could have one down there or some type of placeholder where I could easily just kind of have that at all times. Let's get into downloading the app first. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open up Google Play Store. Now, I search for Note Shelf 2, and then you can go ahead and install the app. There is a fee for it. Once you've installed the app, it will show up on your device. It might not necessarily be in your home screen, but it'll definitely show up amongst all of your apps. I went ahead and put it right on the home screen itself. So it can go ahead and open that app. Now, when it comes to opening up the app, there's a couple things I quickly want to tell you. We talked about syncing. If you go into the settings and go to Cloud Backup, you have the ability to connect with Dropbox, Google Drive, or Evernote. In this case, I linked it with my Google Drive account, and I have it set to backup all the time. Uh, even when I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, it's still going to backup, and I think that's really important. Once you're out of there, you can go back, close that, and from here, you can go ahead and click on the folder and create a category if you choose to. If you simply wanna go ahead and add a PDF, you can go ahead and hit the plus key and you can import a document or create a notebook or import some type of scan file or photo. By clicking on import a document, it's going to pull up your 
drive. In this case, I have the option to look at my files and see drive, my drive. I have my OneDrive account connected, my Google Drives. I have my files on my computer. And it's gonna show me my most recent documents. We've always tell people when you download something off the internet for digital planners, it's best to do that on the device itself and save it locally. And that allows you to then import it directly into the device. And you should always import it. That way, whatever digital planner you're using or whatever PDF annotation app that has interactive hyperlinks, it's going to give you the best performance and more than likely it's going to install correctly so all those links work for you. So you would simply go ahead and insert and import that document into your note shelf application. And that's really it. That is what you need to do to be able to start your digital planning experience. Now I'm gonna show you guys my planner and give you guys a little bit of background on it and kind of talk about uh, how we utilize it and then kind of show you how you can utilize some of the key functions in note shelf opening up the pdf or in this case the planner you can see it opens up to a cover page or the first page in that interactive pdf and you can take your finger and you can slide back and forth now you have the ability to change that if you want to see more of a vertical slide but for this case we're going to leave it as is so one feature that I found recently that really excites me about Note Shelf is that I can use the pen tool and I can draw with the pen tool, but still be able to use the navigation tools with my finger that normally you cannot use in other applications such as GoodNotes. In GoodNotes, you have to go ahead, disable your tool, and then with your stylus, you can go ahead and use the hyperlinks. But one thing that's really nice about Note Shelf is you can keep your pen tool, your stylus active, and then use your finger to still navigate through some of those hyperlinks. So that's really exciting. That's something that, that I got really excited for. So what's really nice about this system is that with the pen tool, you can easily write notations. You can go ahead and you can highlight those notations and you can even create text boxes where you might want to add text to your document. Right here you can see that we're doing that. And you can resize and you can move and you can really get exciting things to happen uh, with this planning system uh, using some of these tools. So let's show you some, how to use some of those tools in our daily pages. So I'm gonna jump over into January. From January, I wanna get to Monday the 4th. And this is my daily page. This is a page where when it comes to daily planning, it's kind of like it's where it all exists. And if you guys want to learn more about the planner, go ahead, hit the link above, and you guys can learn all about our planning system. Uh, it is something that is going to be ever-changing, especially if you're someone that really wants to embrace digital note-taking and daily planning in 2021 and beyond. This is a device application that is going to work for you. So with handwriting, you can go ahead and you can select the handwritten tool. Now, if you go ahead and hold down on it, you have the option to change your pen. You can choose from a couple different pen options. You can go ahead and change colors. You can edit that and really get a huge arrangement of colors if you would choose to. You even have the ability to type in a custom code. Maybe your brand or business has a custom color and you want to utilize that. Now, you can go ahead and pick from you know ballpoint, fountain, and so forth, and then also choose the thickness. So if I want to use a calligraphy pen and I want it to be blue and I want it to be this thickness, that would be my pen choice. But if I click on this little heart, it's going to add it to my favorites. And you can see right now I have all the favorites and then I can show that toolbar uh, whenever I am in my pen mode. So I can easily click on that and get to that uh, pen mode or any of those different pen modes that I would choose to use. And that works not only for pens, but it also works for your highlighter. Same thing with the highlighter, you have the option to go in, choose thickness, choose if it's more of a highlight or a markup, you can do that right here, same as your pen functionality. Where you get pretty creative is in the eraser tool. In the eraser tool, we have a couple different options. We can hit clear page and we're not gonna do that right now because that would be devastating for what I'm trying to show you guys uh, when it comes to daily planning. But I have the ability that once I start an erase tool, I can come in and I can erase and as soon as I let go, it takes me back to my last tool that I had selected. Now, a lot of times if I'm doing a lot of markup and I'm doing a lot of writing, that is really awesome. If I wanna go back, erase something, and then know instantly when I lift the pen back off the screen, it's going to give you my previous tool. But in some cases, I wanna be very 
selective about my erasing that I don't want to have that on. Now I have the ability that I can erase entire stroke or I can erase only the highlighter. This is a really cool feature that I like. So I have my pen tool there, but I can come go in here and I can erase just my highlighting tool. That is something I really did enjoy in GoodNotes and something that OneNote doesn't offer, but it is offered here in NoteShelf. Now one other segment is to be able to erase uh, not the entire stroke. So I can come in here and I can just erase a portion of that stroke, or I can turn the entire stroke on and that allows for some pretty fast editing and using that erase tool to delete some of those lines. The text tool, pretty self-explanatory T for text. If I go ahead and I use my finger and I type on the screen, it's going to load that container. I can move that container and I can type I can type in the box and use my keyboard however I wish. And then I can easily resize that container and I can also then tap, hold, and move that type. One thing that's really cool about our planner is you have the ability with the planner to be able to type on the lines that provide them and have it evenly spaced out if you use our recommended font and size that we recommend. But looking at just digital planning, what really gets me most excited about is the ability to have some of this collaboration take place. When it comes to daily planning, so many times in life when we're meeting with customers, if I have a device up in front of us and we're talking and I'm taking notes, that becomes very distracting and a challenge for a lot of people. But if I'm sitting here and I'm engaged in the note taking process and I'm talking to you, I'm listening to you and I'm writing notes about what it is you're saying, I am creating an engagement with you and usually the person that's speaking really feels that I'm being reciprocal of their information and it helps you build better relationships. So what's also really cool about this is I can go ahead, I can use the select tool and I can go ahead and I can select an area of my type. I can take a screenshot of it. I can cut it from the page. I can copy it. I can delete it. I can resize it and I can even convert it to text. And I want to show you that because that is just so cool. So for those that know me right now, I love grilled cheese. I'm a huge fan of grilled cheese. Uh, it's something that we almost eat weekly in my household. I'm from Wisconsin, so it makes sense. So I typed out grilled cheese. I'm going to select it and I'm going to click to text. And you're going to see here it converted grilled cheese. Now it doesn't stop there. I can copy that to my board or I can simply convert it to a text box. So a lot of you guys have told me you don't have the best markup tools and you're not the best handwriting individual, but sometimes typing isn't convenient, this is a good spot for you to kind of test yourself. See, can I write decent enough that the application recognizes what I'm trying to type? And you can do that. So the lasso tool is pretty awesome when it comes to using those types of things. Now, adding different content to the page gets also really exciting. We can go ahead here and we can actually use this tool up here where I can draw a box and it converts it to a hard shape for me. That is something that I use quite a bit and I use it in diagrams, I use it in just note taking in general, but it's something I can easily do. I also have the ability from this, I can go ahead and I can add uh, different content to the page. So if I wanna add a picture, an audio recording, different photos, we can easily do that. And here's a screenshot of my page. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna Bring that in here, I'm gonna edit it, and I'm gonna crop it down so it's just this toolbar here, and I hit done. Now I have that piece on here, I can easily move that resize that to a size that I like. And then once I lock that, then I have the ability that I can use my different tools and I can mark over top of it. So if I want to come over here and draw some information, maybe I'm doing a tutorial or your mother is uh, across the nation. She wants to know how to do something. She, you can take screenshots. You can go ahead and post those screenshots to your page and then give them some type of instruction and text message or send that PDF to that individual. 
your loved one that you want to share uh, your content with. So that is really cool that you can actually put items and information right in the page. And auto recordings is huge too. Sometimes when I'm in a meeting, I can't dictate as fast as the person that's speaking is giving me and receiving me information. So a lot of times I can record and place that right on my page as well. The other thing that is pretty exciting is that I can actually import additional documents into the notebook of my choice. But when it comes to the notebook, how can I navigate through it and add additional pages or move things along? By clicking up here, it brings my page panel. And from here, I can go ahead and I can scroll through a page, I can edit, so I can take that page and I can easily highlight a page, I can move it, I can duplicate it. So in the notes section, we provide you 10 note pages in the notebook, but if you need more note pages, you simply go into the notes section by closing out of here, clicking on notes, so going to the note page, clicking up here, hitting edit, tapping this page, and hitting duplicate, and I can duplicate one page. The other thing I can do is I can take my finger and I can slide this across the screen and see more pages and have more expanded content to work with. The other part that makes this pretty exciting is I can use this to search. We talked about cheese, right? So we're gonna go in here and type in cheese, and it's gonna show the page that has the word cheese on it. That is incredible, people. So when you're looking at your Samsung tab and you wanna get into digital note taking, daily planning, Note Shelf is a really powerful app. Now we're gonna show you in future videos, Note Shelf, Samsung Notes, and OneNote. So go ahead, subscribe to our page and our channel, and go ahead and hit that like button so others can get notified, and we'll continue to share our digital experience with you. If you guys wanna learn about our planning system and learn what some of these pages can do for you, go ahead, check the link in the description below, and learn all about the Key Success Planner. I'm Brandon Bonifer, and thank you again for this opportunity, and I'll see you guys in the next video. The tripod is crooked, but the... <laughs> Setting up for this video, I set up the tripod and I didn't like where it was positioned, so I moved it. But when I finished moving it, the ball head wasn't level, so I used the camera ball head to level the camera, so the camera is focused. But as I'm sitting here right now, the whole tripod's at an angle. It's probably gonna really bother me through this video, but... We'll see if we can punch through it.